Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's section is 11.6, the area of regular polygons. Up on the screen, you'll see our exit question for the day. So suppose I want to find the area of any regular n-gon. I'm going to draw pictures on this heptagon. It is a regular heptagon. You'll just have to trust me on that. But I want to try to figure out how to find an accurate area to this. Well, one of the first things you might do would be to chop it up into little shapes that you know. And the easiest way to chop up really any polygon would be to chop it up into little triangles. You can use a variety of different shapes, maybe some trapezoids and whatnot, but eventually uh, those all come down to being able to find the area of a triangle. So uh, you can always do it with triangles. So this is just one way is to pick a point and draw a line to each vertex of the shape and make a triangle. This happens to be a regular heptagon, so I can put a dot right smack in the middle, and then I can draw radii, more or less, going out to each vertex, making seven congruent, absolutely congruent triangles. And the convenient thing about that is once I find the area of one, then I just have to multiply it by seven to get the rest of the area of the shape. Now, in order to find the area of this triangle, I'm going to need to know some more information, which would be namely how long the base is and the altitude of it. Notice also that if I put a circle around the heptagon, that is if I inscribe the heptagon, and I can talk about the circle then, that each one of these blue lines that I've drawn is a radius to that circle. Okay, so rather than just pointing at these lines and saying, hey, these are cool lines to know about, these actually have special names and thus brings up our vocab for the day. So here's some vocab. Uh, the center of a polygon is quite simply the center of the circumscribed circle that is around a polygon, a regular polygon. Now we're only talking about regular polygons. That's really important uh, today. Um, the center of the circle that contains the polygon is also the center of the polygon. Uh, the radius of the polygon is also the radius of the circle. And we talk about the radius of the polygon going from the center of the polygon to a vertex of the polygon. The central angle is really any angle that's formed by two radii. The most useful one for us to talk about would be an angle that is made up of two radii that connect two vertices of whatever polygon we're dealing with. In this case, MPN, highlighted in red there on your screen. The only other thing we haven't really talked about is that blue line. That blue line is called an apothem, and it is a super important vocab word because it has a lot of special properties. Firstly, an apothem is defined as the distance from the center of a polygon to any side of a polygon. This will also hold up, this definition will also hold up for irregular pentagon, irregular polygons of any kind, as, but the point that you choose to draw it from may not necessarily be the center of the shape. In fact, you could draw that point anywhere in the shape and still talk about an apothem as being the distance from that point to the side of the polygon. Now, keep in mind, that it is a distance to the side, which means that it has to, absolutely has to be measured along a perpendicular path to that side. In this case, it's a segment. And in this case, we are also dealing with a regular polygon. So therefore, that altitude is also a median in that it intersects the midpoint of segment MN. So in regular polygons that are inscribed in circles, the apothem has a variety of very important properties. First off, it is a median. It intersects the, the midpoint of segment MN. It is an altitude, basically by definition. It has to go along a perpendicular path, and it has to go through that vertex because of the way this was constructed. And in this case, since it is a regular polygon, it is also 
bisecting this angle. Um, while the definition for an apothem holds up for irregular pentagons, some of these properties might not hold. Uh, we're not going to discuss irregular, pentagon, irregular polygons in this particular section. We're going to focus only on regular polygons. So let's pretend we need to find the area of any polygon with any number of sides. Uh, so I have a hexagon drawn obviously here, but this derivation will work for any polygon, any regular polygon with any number of sides. So what is the area of an n-gon in general? Well, you would find the center point and draw these little triangles around it, and then you would find the area of these triangles and multiply them by how many sides you had. So the number of sides times the area of one small triangle. And the area of that one small triangle is defined by or can be found through its apothem, the length of an apothem, and the length of one of the sides of the polygon itself. So if you took one half base times height for one of those triangles and then multiplied it by however many sides it is, so that was a times s divided by two, now we're just gonna multiply it by the number of sides, so each side gets its own triangle. Uh, then we get this formula, which is pretty nice and compact as it is, but we can go even further. This S times N, this is a side length times the number of sides. And in a polygon, in a regular polygon, that will be the perimeter of the polygon. So this, this is a pretty common way to do it, and this is a pretty common way to state the same formula for finding the area of a polygon. And in fact, that is the theorem for the day, 11 dot 11 and there are two forms of it one that breaks the perimeter into ns the number of sides times the length of the sides and one that just references the perimeter so all they really need to give you is the length of an apothem and the perimeter of the shape and you'll be able to figure it out using that little formula right there there are some other interesting relationships here that you need to be aware of. We're taking a regular polygon, we're chopping it into triangles, so basically everything that we know about triangles can help us figure out a missing length, whether that be a radius, an apothem, a side length, an angle, and any other variety of information that we might need to figure everything else we need to know about one of these triangles that's drawn in there. So the most interesting of these I thought was definitely the first one. You can use Pythagorean's theorem on this right triangle here uh, so you have one leg being the length of the apothem, one leg being length, the length of half of a side, so you have one half s. If you square that, it's one quarter times s squared, so keep that in mind, that half is distributed over that multiplication there. And then it also involves the radius of the circle and the radius of the polygon. So it basically involves... This one little theorem involves all three things that we could possibly be interested in. And then, of course, you've got all your special right triangles, your 45, 45, 90, your 30, 60, 90, all those trig ratios hold up, uh, and also all the Pythagorean triples hold up inside these shapes. In addition, uh, if you have, uh, if you use sine, cosine, tangent ratios, you can find a lot of missing lengths. On to our example problem for the day. It's a big one. We're only going to do one example today. Uh, but it's a good one. So the idea here is to find the area of this regular polygon. It was called a nonagon, which is a polygon with nine sides. It is regular and it has a radius of four. Okay, so we need to start picking away at this. Uh, we got a lot of things labeled here, which is kind of nice. We know we have a radius of four. Basically, we need to find the area of this triangle right here and multiply that by the number of sides, which is in this case nine. So let's start drawing this triangle, everything we know about it. And instead of drawing triangle KLJ, I'm only going to draw half of it. So KLM, okay? So I'm, this is triangle KLM that I'm drawing with a right angle in the lower right-hand corner there. I know that that is four inches and that's about it. That's all that's directly given to me. So. We need at least one more piece of information to get going on this triangle. And if you look, 
there's not much given to you. We don't know the side length. We don't know the apothem length. We don't know a whole lot. The one thing we do know is that this is a regular nonagon, which means that it is chopped up into nine equal segments here, and that will also chop the circle and the polygon up into nine equal central angles. So this triangle KLJ contains one ninth of a circle in terms of its degrees here, and Triangle KLM, because it's half of that little triangle, will contain 1 18th of a circle. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to take 360 and divide by 18, and this 20 degrees, we can pop it right in there. And now all of a sudden we have two pieces of information within the triangle, and we can go ahead and solve it. So the lengths that we're really interested in are this leg and this leg. Uh, so we might as well put some labels on them that make sense. Uh, this leg right here is one half the length of the side, and this leg right here is the apothem, the length of the apothem. So we can do a little trig here. Sine of 20 is one half s over 4, and cosine of 20 is a over 4. Set up both of those. This one's pretty easy to solve. Multiply both sides by 4. This one, combine these two numbers, 0.5 divided by 4 is 0.125. And then you're going to have to divide both sides by 0.125 to get rid of it. And everything on the left-hand side of both of those equations is all numbers. So you just pop that into your calculator. You're dealing with trig, so be very accurate. I'm seeing a lot of people rounding off to two or three digits. Not okay in trig. you got to be very precise. Go at least five digits. And from there, we have the two lengths that we need to know. So we need to start working on the area of the larger triangle now. We have S, not just half S, but we have the length of the entire side right here. And we have the length of the apothem. So uh, we're going to take 9 times the area of triangle KLJ. So 9 times base times height divided by 2. In this case, our base is the side. Our height is the apothem or vice versa, however you, well, I suppose there's really only one way to look at that, the way we set it up, and then divide by 2, and then we need 9 of them. So we multiply that by 9, pop that all into the calculator, and you get 46.28 square inches. Awesome problem. Here's your assignment. It is a worksheet. I will see you next time.